What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Miller, coming to you live. And it is time for us to dive into the center of the storm and discuss what today's topic is. And today's topic is staying centered in the middle of her storm or staying centered when she brings you her storm. All right. Welcome to all those that are new who haven't been following me before. I am David Mailer. I'm the Man on Fire Mentor. I've been working with men now for over 25 years, more specifically through Man on Fire as a company for the past eight or nine years. We have a specialty in helping men drop from their head down into their body, down into their hearts, learning how to be more present, learning how to have more empathy, learning how to have more compassion, and we support men in up-leveling in the different domains of their life. In particular, and most importantly, their relationships, also with their mission and their purpose, their health, their career, and their finances. So if you found me, I'm guessing it's not by accident, so let's dive right into the center of that fire today and learn what the hell am I talking about when I'm referring to staying centered when she brings you her storm. Well, most men, Right? I like to say that, most men. I, I, it's not like I took a survey, but I'm going to say of all the men that I've worked with, what's common is that a man is so much different in how he interacts with his guy friends, how he is around his male uh, companions, than how he is around his wife. And it's kind of like um, the relationship that you have with different people you show them different versions of you. You show them different parts of you. I remember when uh, I used to play golf a lot and I would play with my friends and I was having a really good round. And next thing you know, my dad would show up and, um, you know, slicing the ball and hooking the ball. And I'm like, why does that happen? How is it that I was just playing really well? And I understand it's a game of golf. That's how it goes. But why is it that in the presence of my father, all of a sudden I become a different person? And I'm using that as an analogy for you to take a look at. Why is it in the presence of a woman, in the presence of your girlfriend, in the presence of your fiance, in the presence of your wife, maybe even in the presence of your ex-wife, do some of you notice that sometimes you're not in your center, you're not in your power, you're not in your leadership, you're not in your manhood, you're not in your masculinity, you're maybe in your head, or maybe for some of you, you could relate to this, you recognize that it's a complete giving away of your power and you might default to being a pleaser or you might be defaulting to being a yes man or you may even have gotten to a level where you're somehow looking for her approval and you've turned her into your mom. I call that momming. And when this happens, you recognize, my God, I'm not being who I really am. Why is it that with this person I can't just be my most full authentic, congruent version. Well, there's a lot of reasons behind that. And part of the reason is you may not have done enough uh, work on yourself. You may not have grown yourself to a point, to a level, to a place where you have consistency in the different phases and the different domains of your life, right? Some of us, for example, we crush it in business and you know we're, we're great with our employees and we're just uh, killing it. The trophies, the plaques, the awards, making lots of money, but then all of a sudden in our marriage, we don't have the same level of success. So put all that to the side for a moment, because what I'm really talking about today is, are you able to maintain your center in the face of her storm? So what do I mean by her storm? What are, what are we even talking about here? And, and, and I want uh, all the guys that might be new to listening to me for the first time, I want you to recognize that when I talk about the feminine, it's with reverence. I have the utmost respect um, for the feminine. My wife is sacred to me. My wife is the most important person in the world to me. Holding her heart as sacred, being the guardian, the gatekeeper, being the one that gets to protect her heart is such a sacred privilege that is bestowed upon every man. For those of you that have daughters, for those of you that have a sister, for those of you that have a wife, Please understand, and I've shared this on many of my other podcasts and lives, at one point in time, this person was an innocent little girl, just like you were an innocent little boy, with the purity, with the playfulness, and with that 
gleam, that glow, that spark in your eye where your essence could still be seen and it was palpable. And then life as it does brings you all sorts of different hurts and wounds and traumas and up came the walls, up came the armor, up came the concrete and little by little by little by little that sparkle in your eyes as a little boy and also as a little girl started fading away. And it would be man after man after man that would disappoint and betray the feminine whether it was father, whether it was first boyfriend, whether it was ex-husband, whether it's current husband, there's nonstop betrayals. Why? Because a man loses his way. And when a man doesn't feel adequate, when you're feeling inadequate, when you're feeling unworthy, when you're feeling unlovable, more often than not, you might default to becoming that steamroller, that gaslighter, using harshness, being passive aggressive, being aggressive aggressive, right? Some men actually get physically uh, or emotionally violent, which we, we never support in the man on fire world. It's our sacred duty and it's our sacred privilege to be the protector of her heart, not somebody that hurts it. So many of you listening right now might say, geez, how did I forget, right? If you could remember who she was when she was a little girl, right? Just go observe little children today. Go look at a little girl. Go look at a little boy, you know, age four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at the purity. Look at the innocence and come back into the remembrance of, my God, I want to protect this person. But yet so many of you that are listening to this podcast right now or my live are realizing you're failing at this job, maybe with your kids, maybe with the, with the woman that's in your life, maybe even with your ex-wife. You're failing miserably at protecting her heart and you have a, a bunch of reasons, a bunch of stories, a bunch of excuses, a bunch of justifications as to, well, David, if you knew what she did, then you would understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. No, I won't. What I've understood and what I understand is that a man loses his way. And if you're using harshness and you have reasons to justify it, you need to look in the mirror. You need a gut check. You need a reality check. You're out of integrity with your soul. You're out of integrity with her soul. You're out of integrity, period. No matter what somebody's done to you, the conscious withholding of love or the harsh treatment of another person is not called for, period. And anyone that's supporting you and carrying that out and carrying that on, you're hanging out with the wrong people and you're in the wrong crowds and you're in the wrong supportive culture because in the man on fire world, you won't get away with that. You'll be held. You'll be held accountable to treating the feminine with reverence, with respect, with dignity, with grace, with love, with empathy, with compassion, and with presence. Are you ready for that? Not every guy's ready for that. So getting back to what are we talking about the storm? Well, because there's been so many betrayals, right? And I got thousands of stories now compiled. Because there's been so many betrayals, you know, there's going to be a lot of times where the woman that you're with is coming at you. She's coming at you with all this energy, with all this frustration, with all this anger, and she's coming at you and she's bringing her storm. And let me just start by saying, guys, if she's bringing you her storm, that is so much better than the ones where your wife or your ex-wife at this point has gone into a place of apathy where you feel no emotion from her, stone cold. Because that's the next phase of where she's completely disassociated and disconnected from you. If she's bringing you the storm, there's still a care in there. There's still love in there. And your role as a man is simple. So lean in and pay attention right now because this is going to change your life for those of you that are truly listening. When a woman brings you her storm, stop, S-T-O-P, personalizing it. Stop, S-T-O-P, personalizing it. Don't take it personally. The problem is most men have a weak spine, a weak backbone. Most men are weak in the knees. Most men haven't done enough growing of themselves, up-leveling their frequency, their consciousness, their centeredness, their solidity. Most men don't know how to be unwavering and imperturbable in the face of the storm. And what ends up happening is you feel inadequate in those moments you're feeling like you're not enough, you're feeling like it's your fault, 
and you don't like that feeling and what happens unconsciously, subconsciously, outside of your awareness, meaning you're not present to it, is you either retreat, right? Like you, you literally turn your back. Like we used to have guys at some of our events and we would throw them into the, the boxing ring and some of them would turn their back to the other fighter which tells me that in life they're turning their back to things they don't want to face or they can't face. Like where else is that happening in your life? In fact, we had one guy that did that in the ring and I remember his story was he used to go to sleep and his wife would cry herself to sleep and he would have her back turned to her. Couldn't even face her, just like he couldn't face his opponent in the ring. What happened to us that we have to personalize this, that we have to act out passive aggressively or aggressive aggressively and come at her with a verbal onslaught. I'm gonna win this fight, I'm gonna let my ego win, I'm gonna feel better, I'm gonna put her in her place. Really, wake up. This is the feminine we're here to protect. If she's bringing you her storm, I have news for you. She's saying, I'm hurting. I'm hurting right now. I don't see you. I don't feel you. You're not present. I don't feel your empathy. I don't feel your compassion. You're in your head. You've lost your way. You've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten who I am. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? That's all she's saying. And she's saying, I'm scared. I'm scared that I can't trust you anymore. I'm scared that you're not gonna change. I'm scared that you're not gonna continue to grow. I'm scared that you're gonna wake up tomorrow and leave me. I'm scared that you're gonna cheat on me. I'm scared that you're not gonna maintain this love that we have. I'm scared that I can't trust you anymore. I'm scared to be alone. I'm scared to be hurt again. And you don't hear that. What you hear is you think she's complaining. You think she's being a nag. You think that she's entitled, you think that she's cold, you think that it's all about her and you're missing the mark. You're missing what's underneath her emotion and you're missing why there's a storm. There's a storm because you most likely have been asleep. There's a storm because your masculine leadership has been lacking. There's a storm because you haven't been showing up in your true potential. There's a storm because you've been selling her short. There's a storm because you've settled for a life of complacency and neutrality and you fell asleep for too long and she's trying to wake you up. Where are you? Where are you? So of course she's bringing you the storm. Of course you're not gonna like it because you don't like who you're seeing most likely in the mirror. That's so easy to point your finger and to say what's wrong with her and she did this and she did that and you don't understand David, she's been cheating, she's the one that's been having an affair, I bought her the house, I bought her the jewelry, I got her the extra car. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. You tried to solve the problem by being a pleaser and by being a yes man and you betrayed yourself. And when you get knocked off of your center, guess what? She loses respect for you. You giving her what she wants you are losing her respect because now she knows you're movable. You are no longer imperturbable. You no longer are centered. You no longer are unwavering. How could she trust you when you disrespect yourself? How could she possibly trust you when she could move you? How is that possible? I, I, I thought I was supposed to give her all these things. No, you were doing that as a compensation for feeling inadequate because you lacked masculine leadership because you couldn't own your nose and you couldn't communicate it in a way where you spoke from your heart and you spoke from your head and you crushed her. Or you turned to the pleaser and the yes man and you did all these things and now it's in your face because she doesn't trust you because you violated your own moral compass. I say compass, my wife says compass. I looked it up, the proper pronunciation is compass. I don't like the way that sounds. I'm from the Bronx, I'm saying compass. You violated your moral compass. You went against your own values, you went against your own principles. So of course, there's a storm. She no longer trusts you. You no longer trust yourself. And now you're, you're fighting, you're drowning, you're, you're, you're trying to grasp anything you can because you're sinking and you lash out at her. Or even worse, you walk away. Yeah, you leave the house. Ah, I don't need this, I'm out of here. Like a chicken, like a coward. 
or maybe you lash out aggressively or passive aggressively, none of which is okay. None of it. What's okay? What's okay? What's okay is you learn. You effing learn how to stay in your center in the middle of the storm. Who saw an officer and a gentleman? By the way, guys, smash up that likey. Boom! Smash it up. Boom! Smash it up. Don't make me give you the uppercut. Boom! Smash it up. Hit that like key. Why? Well, if you're liking this, the way that you can pay us back is by hitting the like key. Throw us some fire signs. Help other guys have access to this type of material. You know, let's help each other rise. Let's build each other up. There's too much tearing down of other people, of other men. Let's build each other up. I'm not tearing any of you down. I'm holding your ass accountable. I'm holding you to the fire of your greatness. I'm giving it to you straight. I don't sugarcoat it. You'll get my heart, you'll get my soul, you'll get my fire, you'll get it all. Never will it be sugarcoated in Man on Fire. Too many guys are placating, giving it to each other softly, saying what the other person wants to hear. Please like me, please like me. I'm going to give it to you gentle. It's nauseating. It's what cost me my first marriage. No one gave it to me straight. I was drowning in the sea of my own lies, my own stories, my own bullshit. You want to respect me? You want to respect another man? Give it to him straight. Give it to him straight. Every man deep down wants it straight. Are you hearing me on this, guys? Put it in the chat. What are you hearing? Give me, give me a, a comment. Let me know what you're hearing. I want to read some of the comments. I want to make sure that this is landing for you. Then I'm going to talk to you about the movie that I want to talk to you about. What are you guys hearing so far? Put it in the chat. Yep, Justin's saying he had to learn this the hard way. Sorry, brother. Sadly, for many of us, we don't wake up until the fire has surrounded us. Right? You, you want to get out before there's even a brush fire. Then when you sense the brush fire, you got you to gotta learn how to deal with this stuff. You can't turn your back to it. You can't run away. You can't steamroll. You can't gaslight. No, you got to face it head on. That's called staying in your center, unwavering, imperturbable. Nothing you could do. Nothing you could do. This is what you're feeling inside of you, the energy you're giving off. There's nothing you can do, my queen, that is going to make me withdraw my love. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can say that will make me withdraw my love from you. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I love you. I'm not saying to say this out loud. I'm saying to say this in your energy. But too many of you haven't done the work. And you're weak in your knees and you're weak in your backbone. And rather than feeling inadequate in that moment, internally your mind is complaining about her complaining. I can't believe her. She doesn't, she's not appreciative. She's so entitled. She's always complaining. She's always cold. When is, when she'll never be happy. This is what comes up in your head. These are not your real thoughts. This is the pirates talking, the ego that take, took over your ship, took your ass to Skull Island, try to ruin your life. The real you would stand in that storm and recognize she's hurting right now. Let me drop in. Let me get present. Let me give her my heart. Let me give her my soul. Let me stay steadfast, sturdy. Rooted, centered, unwavering, imperturbable. Let her feel that. Well, how, how do I do that? How do I do that, David? Ah, well, that's the work that's ahead of you because you're not reading it in a book. You're not going to learn how to do it from me telling you to do it. That's the work that's in front of you. That's the work that's ahead of you. For those of you that want support with that, reach out to us. Come to one of our programs. We'll show you how to do it. It's not an overnight process. There are no magical pills, no magical potion, lotion, genie fixes in the man on fire world. It's hard work. It's commitment. And it's backed by a brotherhood with support, challenge, and accountability. Support, challenge, being held accountable. Support, challenge, being held accountable, held to the fire of your true potential, your true greatness. So who saw the movie, Officer and a Gentleman? Put it in the chat. Who saw it? Who saw it? Officer and a gentleman. Anyone? Amazing movie. 
I remember the scene with Louis Gossett Jr. He's yelling in Richard Gere's face, trying to get him to drop out. I think it was the, the Marines, trying to get him to drop out. And he's telling him he's weak. You're going to drop out. He would call him mayonnaise. You're, you're, you're not built for this. You're not cut for this. You're going to drop out. Just yelling in his face, trying to egg him on, get him to take a swing at him so he could dismiss him and get him thrown out. And Richard Gere's role was to just take it without personalizing it. To recognize that this man that's yelling in his face, his drill sergeant, was trying to bring out the best of him, was trying to get him prepared for when he's in battle to maintain his center. Get ready for war. Don't lose who you are. Don't lose your center. Don't lose your roots. Don't listen to my words. Come back into the conviction and the knowing of who you are. See past my words. Don't personalize it. Come back into the remembrance of who you are. But you know what? So many men in the face of the feminine storm lose their center, lose who they are, and either retreat or fight back in a way where you should not be proud of how you're handling it. And you missed the mark of understanding what's really happening. You personalized it. Well, how can I not personalize it, David? She's saying all these things about me and to me. How could I not personalize it? She's talking directly to me. You're personalizing it by not recognizing she's in pain. She's hurting. Yes, you need to take responsibility and ownership for the things that she's sharing that are true, but it's not about personalizing it where you make it mean that you're not enough. You make it mean that you're inadequate. You make it mean that you're an unworthy, unlovable piece of nothing. That's personalizing it. And then when you do that, then you carry your shame and your guilt and then you steal the whole show. Then it becomes about you. Here she is bringing you her upsets and you want to make it about you. Poor you, tuck your tailbone. Look at my shame, look at my guilt. Come take care of me, mommy. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. So I'm talking to the guy out there right now that knows exactly what I'm saying, that knows you need to learn how to start growing this muscle. You need to grow your backbone. talking to that guy that knows it's time. Time to reclaim your masculine presence, to get out of your head, to stop personalizing things, to hold an unwavering presence encoded with empathy and compassion where you're coming from your heart, not your head. And you can speak to the deeper conversation, the deeper conversation, acknowledging what's really going on, Right? And in most cases, for a lot of you, it's, I get why you're so upset with me. I get why you're so frustrated. I've been falling short of the man that you married. I've sold myself short and I've sold you short. And I'm only beginning to comprehend how much that hurts. Whatever it is for you, right? I've been out of integrity. I haven't kept my word. I haven't kept my promises. You can't lean on me. You can't trust me. I've been leaking my energy. I've been watching porn, going to strip clubs, whatever it is for you. And you're wondering why she's bringing a storm and you think you're innocent? It's not about blame, it's not about fault. It's about what are you willing to own? What are you willing to take responsibility for? And can you get to a place where you don't lose who you are? You come into the remembrance of who you are in that moment and you hold space and you let her share whatever she has to share and you help her feel that you're not going anywhere. I love you, I'm here. Bring it to me. Pound my chest. Give me all of your emotions. Let's get it. Let's get to it. Right? But most of us haven't been taught how to do this. And I'm here to let you know that if you need to learn how to do this and you want support, then get your ass to one of our four-day immersions. It'll be the best four days you've ever spent in your life of learning how to come back into the remembrance of who you truly are as a man learning how to authentically reclaim your power where you're fully connected to your heart and you're finally out of your head, learning how to regain mastery over your own mind and kick the pirates off the ship, have them walk the plank or instruct them to grab a mop and swab the deck. You will learn how to be present for another human being, especially your wife. You will learn 
how to be encoded with empathy and compassion. You will learn how to still your mind. You will learn all of these things at one of our events. And you will leave a more coherent and aligned version of the real you. That's what she wants. That's what your kids want. And that's who you've gotten away from being. And that's why she's in pain. And that's most likely why you're in pain for, the, for those guys listening right now that could relate. For those of you that are killing it in life, crushing it in life, have healthy, vibrant, alive relationships, good for you. You're in the minority, sadly. Good for you. So I've been doing this, like I said, for 25 years, more specifically for the past nine years with men. We have hundreds of gentlemen in our brotherhood called our inner chamber. I come on all the time to these podcasts, to these lives, <clears throat> give you guys a little taste of who I am and what our company is all about. And for those of you that truly are resonating with my message, I'm speaking to you, it's coming through like a transmission, it's piercing you, it's making it to your heart, it's making it to your soul, and you have a deep calling to want to explore one of our coaching programs, especially the one that enables you to come to one of our live four-day immersions, reach out to us. Go to manonfirerising.com. Scroll around the site. Learn a little bit more about who we are. Look at some of the testimonials. Feel into our brotherhood. And then when you're ready, fill out an application to see if you're eligible and qualified to speak to one of our coaches, to explore one of our coaching programs. For those of you that are not ready for that type of investment in yourself, monetarily, energetically, commitment-wise, continue to follow me on these free podcasts and different social platforms. And when you are ready, reach back out. We'd love to have that conversation with you. All right, guys, give me some feedback here. I want to know what have you taken away thus far from what I have been sharing? What is your big aha? What is your greatest takeaway? I see a bunch of you out there. I know Alan, he came to one of our four-day immersions. What's up, brother? I see Dean, who's coming to an immersion in September. Good to see you. I see Sean, who just joined our inner chamber and came to an immersion a few months ago. Brother Sean, great to see you. Lots of you out there. Kevin, long time, brother. Hope you're well, man. Miss you. So many of you. Sorry if I'm not mentioning all of your names. Oh, there's Daniel Smart. He takes care of me at some of the events. He does his magic with acupuncture. We got an amazing team, a lot of loving brothers that are genuinely... Um, are genuine about their their love for a fellow man and really have committed to wanting to live into the integrity of our true potential and be able to give from our heart so selflessly and we have to learn how to get out, get out of our own way. So many of us are encoded with so much shame and so much guilt from the stuff that we've done in our life that we hide from the world and we hide our true gifts and at Man on Fire, we're here to teach you how to stop doing that. How to start tapping into the real version of who you were born to be and bring that to the world because that's what everyone's hungry for and that's what everyone's waiting for. Gentlemen, it is always a honor and a privilege to be of service and to share my trials, my tribulations, my stories, and my life with you. It's your Man on Fire mentor, David Mailer. If you haven't already, smash up that like key, share this with other friends, Put your final comments in there. And for those of you that have a knowing that you need to explore one of our coaching programs, we look forward to hearing from you. So much love, guys. Until next until next week. Hmm, next week I'm traveling. Nope, I'll be around. I get back Tuesday. Perfect. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. So much love. Bye, guys. Oh, is Daniel Smart out there? Smart, I love you, brother. I love you. I love you.